Hello everyone and welcome back to Dex and Dials. So today I wanted to talk about a few of the lessons that I learned from my purchase of my Moon Swatch and how it would apply to deciding whether to buy a uh, 51 Fathoms, which is the new collaboration between Swatch and this time Blancpain, whereas before it was between them and um, Omega. So for reference here, I have my um, homage of the 51 Fathoms from uh, Steel Dive, just a quality uh, homage from an affordable uh, Chinese company, but I'll talk about why I think that in a number of ways it's actually better as a uh, tribute to the 50 Fathoms than the 51 Fathoms that uh, Swatch is offering. So to begin with, uh, one important thing that I learned is to value the amount of time that you would need to spend to uh, get the 51 Fathoms, because of course you can't just order it online, you need to go to one of the few boutiques that actually carry it, or rather have a chance to carry it, because you don't know whether they'll have it uh, in stock when you actually get there. So you can call them, for example, in the morning, they can tell you that they have it, but somebody else might pick it up by the time that you get there. Um, so it's kind of a risk to spend a long period of time to drive to you know, a boutique if you don't have one you know, on your block, essentially, and not all boutiques will actually carry them. So you have to check that the boutique carries it, then make your way out there, and then hope that they'll have the one that you want. So. All of that essentially inflates the real cost of the watch because A, you'll need to spend all that extra time and B, if you get there and they don't have it, you essentially wasted that time and you need to spend even more time to try again. So I went through that a couple of times when I bought this um, Moon Swatch uh, at one of the Berlin boutiques and I had to take a couple of trips to get there. And even though I worked in Berlin at the time, uh, it was in a different part of the city, so it took me quite a while to get there. And uh, only, I think on the third or fourth try, I actually managed to get one. And it wasn't necessarily the one that uh, was at the top of my wish list. So I would have preferred uh, a Saturn, a Jupiter, a Mercury. Uh, but all they had ooh, when I got there uh, was the uh, Mission to the Sun, which, you know, is nice, especially now that I've put it on this um, kind of like a rally style black and yellow strap, which I think goes much better with the head of the watch than the uh, white Velcro strap that it uh, originally came with. So I'm much happier with it now, but ultimately I took this one because I wasn't, you know, I didn't have uh, the option to buy the one that I truly wanted. Uh, and so ultimately, of course, that doesn't give you as much satisfaction as if you had gotten exactly the one that you want. So moving on. Uh, the number one reason is, you know, the value of your time. And the number two reason is that the inflation in the price that we're seeing, so the 51 Fathoms is, I think, $400, whereas the Moon Swatch was only $250. So for that extra $150, like, yes, you're getting a better watch in the sense that now you're getting a movable bezel, you're getting more water resistance, and uh, you're getting an automatic movement as opposed to the quartz movement here. But at the same time, in terms of what else you could do with that money, there's much more uh, in terms of what else you could buy for that extra $150 or just $400. So it, it's a much higher barrier to entry to clear because you can buy, you know, a nice Zelos uh, from, you know, one of their simpler ones for $400. Uh, whereas for $250, I feel like it's a much easier ask to spend it on something where you're not 100% uh, maybe sure about whether it's worth it, but it's kind of like easier to convince yourself at that lower price point. Um, now, Another thing that you have to remember at that higher price point, and this is point number three, is that you're still dealing with a very fragile uh, watch. So the body on the 51 Fathoms is still made from this uh, kind of bi-ceramic, as they call it, but it's plastic. So it's much less uh, resistant to scratches and damage than a uh, steel watch. So you still have to be extremely careful where you wear it. Uh, and of course, the... Um, uh, the glass on the uh, at the top of the watch on the 51 Fathoms is still uh, essentially a acrylic glass, I believe. So it will pick up scratches very easily, just like this one. But again, at that higher price level, it's much harder to justify to yourself these compromises. So you're still dealing with essentially a watch that you have to baby a lot. Uh, and, you know, if you do damage it, it's you know much harder to uh, to deal with that on a on a more expensive watch. And as far as the durability of the movement itself goes, obviously uh, 
one of the advantages of the construction of the 51 fathoms is that you can actually replace the movement. So theoretically, it is serviceable. But A, that could turn out to be very expensive because uh, I don't believe that they sell uh, 51 fathoms, or rather, uh, System 51 movements just by themselves. So you can just buy it cheaply like a Seiko NH35 and swap it out. Uh, you'd essentially have to buy another System 51 watch, rip out a movement from that one, and put it in. So that's quite an expensive proposition, and you will need to do that on, a on an automatic or rather a, a, any kind of mechanical watch, whether it's hand winding or automatic, because, you know, if you wear it, there is, you know, a balance that, you know, uh, swings back and forth uh, multiple times per second. So there's a gear train, so parts will wear out much faster than, for example, on a quartz movement like the one in the moon swatch where there's almost no moving parts really and the ones that do move like the you know the second hand it only moves one per, once per second essentially so there's very little mechanical where you can basically almost never service it if you keep it in good condition and keep water out uh, all you'll need to do realistically in you know a decade or two is to just swap out the battery a couple of uh, times so you probably won't need to actually service it and it'll work just fine so um, that brings me to the um, uh, fourth point, which brings in this homage, and that is that the 51 Fathoms, unlike the Moon Swatch, actually isn't really uh, representative of the classic uh, watch that it's supposed to represent. And let me explain. Um, the Moon Swatch is based, obviously, on the Omega uh, Speedmaster that, you know, the Moon Watch uh, and... The design, obviously, they have uh, several variations, some that deviate more, some that deviate less, but the basic design is very much recognizable here. With the 51 Fathoms, unfortunately, they chose to base it on the modern 51 Fathoms from Blancpain, so it doesn't really look like this. Uh, it has uh, kind of like a curved surface uh, to the bezel. It's a much smaller bezel and a wider watch face. And if you look at pictures of the classic uh, 50 Fathoms, you know, from the 50s, that's, you know, the iconic uh, real first military dive watch, proper military dive watch with a rotating bezel, uh, it looks like this, where it has a flat uh, bezel, a smaller dial, and the, especially the, um, what do you call it, the, like, the teeth on the outside of the bezel, they're these, like, sharp, small teeth, whereas on the modern one, they're, like, big, almost gear teeth, and at first glance, maybe somebody who isn't a huge fan of the 50 Fathoms wouldn't really notice much of a difference. But for me, as somebody who really loves the design of the original 50 Fathoms, you know, the vintage one, uh, and it's, you know, one of my grail watches to get, uh, you know, specifically uh, one of the original uh, watches, not the modern one, uh, I'm much happier with this homage that is much more representative of that classic design. And... You know, if I save up and manage to buy an original 50 Fathoms watch, obviously that's much more expensive. But to me, that's actually something that's worth saving. Whereas the uh, the more you know common and also very expensive, let's be honest here, uh, new uh, 50 Fathoms from Blancpain, it's honestly it looks it looks like a luxury watch. It doesn't have that same. Uh, appeal of a like you know a real military dive watch a tool watch it you know it looks like a time luxury timepiece which it is so to me it just feels like the whole point of getting one of these collaboration uh, watches from Swatch is to get something that's you know that's a callback that's a, you know a tribute to the original design which I feel like they pulled it off more or less with the Moon Swatch but they didn't really do it with the 51 Fathoms. They are, it's much more of a, you know, a tribute to the modern 50 Fathoms, but to be honest, that's really not the iconic 50 Fathoms that most people who really love that watch would think of when they hear the name. So they're thinking of the vintage design, not the modern design. And now finally moving on to the uh, fifth lesson, and this is one that's very much region dependent. Uh, so for example, I bought this one uh, in Berlin and as it turned out, in Germany, Swatch will not allow you to uh, essentially bring your watch back within like some period of time. So the usual case for Germany is 14 days, where if you buy a product and it's 
still in brand new condition, you don't like it, you can bring it back for a refund. Not Swatch though. So as I said, the Mission to the Sun wasn't my first choice. I got it because I thought, well, I don't know if I'll get my hands on one of the versions that I want uh, more than this one. So I grabbed it, brought it home, and, you know, after thinking about it a little bit, I was like, you know what? I really think I prefer to get one of the ones that I want more. And so I thought, okay, I'll just bring it back, get my money back, and then, you know, try to get, let's say, the uh, Mercury or Saturn or um, uh, Jupiter. Mars is another good one. Uh, so I'll try to get one of those later. You know, I'll be patient. And when I brought it back, they said, no, sorry, you can only get a refund for something you bought online. If you bought it in the store, uh, we can't give you a refund no matter what. And uh, of course, you can't get it online. So that means that once you buy it, you buy it. That's it. You have no option to give it back. And then if you're not happy with it or you change your mind, your only option is to then sell it, you know, on the secondary market, which is, you know, not something that I necessarily want to do. Uh or to try to trade it, which I did try, but unfortunately I wasn't able to make that happen. And so instead I kind of embarked on this quest to make it more to my liking, which, and I think I finally accomplished that uh, when I finally found this strap. So I think the strap really changed it for me. So now I really love this. Um, now in Canada, uh, where I live now, I checked, uh, they will allow you to bring a watch back, but that might not necessarily be the case where, uh, you know, wherever you are. So please be careful uh, check their store policy uh, first before buying uh, a watch, um, especially since there's, you know, multiple designs with the 51 Fathoms, just like with the Moon Swatch. So uh, check first whether you would be able to bring it back if, you know, it happens that the, wa that the version that you picked up isn't the one that you necessarily want, you know, to keep forever. So those are five important lessons that I personally learned uh, from the, my experience of buying the moon swatch that I will apply, uh, going forward as I think about whether I should, uh, you know, actually make the trip to maybe try to pick up a 51 fathoms right now I'm leaning towards no. So it's just not enough of, uh, you know, things on the plus side. So enough to make me want to actually go through all the trouble of getting it. So the price, the inconvenience, uh, the, you know, the design uh, difference from, you know, the one that I feel is truly iconic. So right now I'm leaning towards no, I might change my mind at some point, but uh, I will reference you to these uh, five, you know, points to think about uh, if you're also going through this thought process. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, let me know in the comments if, you know, if you disagree with something I've said, if maybe you have other potential, you know, nuggets of wisdom that, uh, you want to share with uh, the other viewers uh, when it comes to buying these watches and hey maybe i'll you know learn something uh, that i could apply to my own purchasing uh, decision so uh, thank you very much for watching uh, subscribe and like if you like this video and you'd like to see more and i will try to upload way more often from now on thank you very much bye bye